Hey guys, my name is Angel. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to develop content for startups that's going to drive acquisition traffic and build up brand awareness. All right, so today I'm going to be using Runway as an example for this project. So what do we want to do today? Particularly, this is going to be for uh, new writers, new newcomers into the digital marketing space, maybe trying to build up a portfolio. We're not getting too into the weeds in terms of you know SEO know-how or content marketing and product marketing. But what does the workflow look like if you're trying to build a portfolio with how you write content or develop a piece of content using different tools at our disposals, AI, um, uh, product marketing tools, your research tools, right? Everything that's pretty you know modernized, being modernized today, and that where a lot of you know different marketers are using today. And I'm going to show you my workflow to get a pretty well thought out piece with all the data that we have our at our disposal. So. The company that I used and decided to and selected for this project is called Runway. And I found these guys on Y Combinator, as they're backed by Y Combinator. And um, I was just looking at different companies that are in the AI space, particularly um, because of all, you know, all this open AI talk, and it's been really um, prevalent lately since it's been publicly released. And a lot of the, a lot of different tools are utilizing its API, the open AI API. So just diving into there, they, these guys don't use that. They're not leveraging that API, but I thought their business was pretty interesting. Just looking at the different startups that Y Combinator is backing and you know what's on the market today. So runway.com or runway.team, I should say, uh, it's they're pretty much trying to change the way or, or make a better way to ship mobile apps, as they say here. So, you know, making it more collaborative, building a, a dashboard, monitoring how uh, product pages are are generating revenue and you know the, the engagement to those types of uh, product pages or different pages in general, right? What are user ratings look like for a specific app? Just kind of the whole uh, dashboard, the whole suite of you know even releases or shipping mobile apps, like it says here, uh, rolling out updates, um, just tracking the overall development, but also into the actual performance features of an application, a mobile application. So this is their homepage here and they have, you know, product use cases, integrations, customer page, pricing, pretty standard stuff for a SaaS company. And the reason I like to write for, or, or I wanted to use a startup as an example is they're going to be looking for people or content marketers that have this experience. And if you're trying to get into this space and you don't have that experience on hand in terms of writing for a uh, previous company that you worked at or an existing company, uh, this type of content or this or developing this type of strategy, I just wanted to give you a workflow that can help you develop maybe a few example pieces, again, using some of the data or some tools that are out there uh, that are pretty cost effective and can get you started on building that type of portfolio. So, of course, one thing we have to understand is what this company is about, what they do, what their product is. If there's a free trial, maybe jump in and start playing around with the tools, read some documentation. I would highly encourage that. Even if, the, if you jump into the FAQs, you need to understand what, what Runway is or what the product is, right? You can't just say, oh, I know SEO or I'm a content mar manager or marketing manager and I know what to do just from the start. You know, here's my checklist that I got from a, an SEO blog. You can't do that. We have to understand every situation is unique. So straightforward, what is Runway? So I like to go to FAQs if they have it because they usually provide um, startups early on they're going to provide, or I guess a lot of businesses too, but I noticed jumping in and looking and researching startups, they're going to have a lot of the uh, top of top of line information in terms of what is the company about. So Runway is a new kind of tool that helps mobile teams automate, track, and collaborate on app releases and rollouts. It sits above your current tool chain, integrating with each piece, version control, project management, CI, stability monitoring, so on and so forth, observability, right, to get your entire mobile org a home. So like I said before, the whole process of releasing and monitoring performance engagement runway replaces your tracking spreadsheets checklist and confluence checklist and confluence docs your endless back and forth in slack your no go slash no go meetings your 15 percent or 15 different browser tabs open all the time right so it's it's bringing all the different tools that a developer or a mobile apps developer would use separately and bring it all into one runway helps your team collaborate and communicate better resulting in less wasted time so the time's big in this industry right Fewer headaches, higher quality products, and happier teammates. So it sounds like overall a better culture than using this app. How does Runway work? Right, we're going to understand how does this work. How does Runway different from these other types of CI/CD tools? Right, how opinionated is Runway? Does my team need to change what they're doing in order to use Runway? So this is a good question. Understanding does my current 
you know, team that I work with have to change their workflow on their day to day. Right. So it says runway was designed from day zero to be plug and play, not just in terms of integrations, but also in terms of how you can configure the platform to adapt to your team's particular way of doing things. Right. So I think that's probably important for mobile developers or the product marketing team or whoever key stakeholders are involved on a project, you know, that revolves around a mobile application development. How long does it take to get right up and running? Right. Cause this is going to be some unique uh, sell it, selling propositions, right? We want to, especially if we're comparing to any competitors on the market, we want to understand like time. Usually setting up is a, kind of a roadblock because it could either take really long or there's no guided process, or it could be really short and have a really in-depth guided process or vice versa, right? My team uses a tool that really doesn't integrate with. What happens now? So kind of a, a potential roadblock for a, a user. What does that look like? What's the answer that Runway has? So we prioritize new te new integrations based on demand. We're always happy to do our best to accommodate specific asks for new com teams coming on board. Get in touch. So early phase startup, uh, take advantage of this. If this is, you know, if they, they do not have something or a tool that doesn't integrate with Runway because they have less of a customer base now. So they're probably going to be a li lot, little bit more faster to get in touch with you and, and resolve your issues or help you get that integration up and running. Chances are it's on our radar. We have a range. Yeah. So if a tool doesn't fit the existing integration point in runway, it's probably on the radar. We have a range of new domains for integration on the roadmap. Maybe we'd want to see the roadmap. If they have access to it, let us know what you plan in mind. and We'll dig into it together. Great. So my team uses on-premise on -premise version control, an on-premise version of tool runway integrates with. Can we still get it integrated with? Runway does support integrations with on-premises, self-hosted tools. Setup typically involves a couple extra steps. So what I'm doing here is I'm running through the FAQs, understanding just what Runway has to offer in terms of the product and support for their audience, right? So we know team, team, it's very focused on teams, integration, collaborations, right? Um, extensive integrations, what size of my team is Runway for? So Runway is used for mobile teams. This is like another way to get an idea of the audience. So they actually provide a little bit of that answer here. And I even checked this beforehand. Uh, Runway is used by mobile teams ranging in size from small startups all the way to Fortune 50 companies, right? It's able to adapt to build upon your existing tools and processes. Uh, for example, we often see smaller teams focus on time-saving automations in the beginning, while larger orgs layer on advanced functions like custom sign-off flows and roll, roll out health safeguards. So this gives you an, an idea into what the data they've been seeing from their users around smaller teams and, and larger enterprise teams. This is another pivot I see being useful when we use some of this context for developing a piece of content for them. Maybe that they can very see that, you know, we've done our research, we understand Runway, and we are adding that value into some type of content strategy that we're gonna build for them. This is a work for cross-platform apps, yes. In practice, it tells you just kind of in practice what that looks like. My team ships many flavors of the same code base. Can Runway work with for this kind of white label use case, yes. Uh, per app pricing, pricing gets expensive for the white label use case. How can my white labeling, white labeling team afford runway? We're happy to work with custom pricing for teams. So they they have an option for there. Just get in touch and they'll put in, make a plan work. Can I use runway for free forever? Yes, on both counts. Runway's free plan gives you access to all the runway fundamentals that make shipping apps less of an event from a robust set of core automation, blah, 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 blah. All right. So they have a free trial, right? That's, um, you're going to see that's pretty prevalent and pretty standard when it comes to these SaaS platforms to give you a free trial. They're all just going to be dependent on what they unlock or what they put behind a paywall in terms of the feature set, right? So playing with the tool or maybe interviewing someone who actually uses the tool and the free, you know, like it's a mobile developer on our team um, can get you more insight since maybe you're not, you know, a mobile developer and you're going to you start the free trial and you're not going to really know what to do, what to look for. So it might be a little hard depending on your background, but it's good that they have a free ac free account, right? Just to understand it. I, I talk to a lot of uh, people in marketing that are developing content strategies and go-to-market strategies, and they don't even use the product of the company or, or even tried or tested the product, not necessarily use it on a day-to-day, -day, but tested out the product and played with it to see what it does, see what the feature sets look like, um, and just to understand what that workflow looks like, right? Because it may look really nice, and it may that be just one first thing to get you kind of intrigued to using the product, but you got to play around with it a little bit. That's just my opinion. I have a technical background. So some of this um, just starting up for, for applications like these is um, pretty straightforward or I understand just the lingo, uh, but it's, it's again, it's a learning curve. You need to understand what you're writing for. You don't have to be technical, but it's good to understand the product. So we understand, you know, a little bit more about runway, what they have to offer. It's good to also go through their key features, see what they're, 
unique selling proposition is for these specific product features. So we have mobile control center, right? They have a sandbox you can actually explore. Interactive demo, this is good. This is pretty standard too. And enter your email address and you can play with the, the sandbox. Uh, rollouts by runway. So monitoring and automating rollouts based on a, you know holistic release health. You could play with that in the sandbox. So it looks like they have a sandbox for every key feature, which is great and just kind of opens the the gate to this product. And when when they're gathering users, all right, or enter users are coming to the site, they have an entry point to start, you know, playing around with the app. And that's going to be a point we may want to address when we're writing a piece of content, thought leadership content for for these guys. Learn more security, what's new, right? They have a link directly to the live sandbox product updates. So they're giving product updates. The last one was in February. We're in March now, uh, March 14th, I believe today. So haven't had an update in a while, but they have a, a place for that, right? For product updates. And they probably have an email update, uh, email um, campaign that they're running with sending updates to their existing user base. Let's see, what else can we do some research here? We look at their FAQs, what's new, security. So this might be about just how security is for uh, this type of application and mobile app development, right? So to give, I guess, uh, teams peace of mind, right? A type of security that they're using for this. So SLC2 type two, right? Then we can go into, uh, what are we doing next? So docs. So this is their documentation for the product. Now it's not necessarily key to understand everything that's here, but looking through it and see if it, how fleshed out it is definitely helps. So you can understand just how much content is here from a docs perspective, right? Cause we might leverage it as resources when we are actually um, developing pieces of content or a marketing or a content strategy. So I want to go back and they have that. So we need to also understand, so all integrations, we could look at version control app store. So there's more stuff here, right? You can look at all the integrations they currently have in terms of the app stores that they support version controlling software that they support, right? Project management. So this is good. This all could be um, used later on in just a strategy to understand the different types of integrations and even competitive analysis when looking at uh, just the landscape there in terms of other competitors of the same niche product customers. So we have some existing customer bases and you can see exactly what they're talking about, how they've, how their experiences has been with runway. So we can see on you know, Kickstarter, uh, class pass route. You know, these are pretty, pretty known, um, brands, at least for, at least I know who they are. Um, pretty well-known brands. Uh, most of them are actually. So if we can look at, you know, class pass, how class pass uses runway to make releases less of a workout, these are just click case studies, right? It's good to understand these two and read through it to see what other companies are talking about or how they're talking about runway pricing. Transparency is great. Having the tiered plans here is just to understand what's available. Um, you can view all features. So below we get just a more extended view of that table. Again, this is good to understand Act, as an acquisition content strategy, we're probably going to be targeting the free signups at first, right? Just to get uh, users into the app, right? Acquisition drive that uh, new user base, increase the subscription base to free users and hopefully end up converting them later down the line using the just the further down the line a more strategy there in terms of uh, activation. So we're going to be talking about this. So pretty much this section of the video is just being able to understand the product you're looking to write about the company, right? Because we also want to understand a little bit of that too. So if you come down here, you know, about us, you can get a look at what the team looks like currently, it's going to be a small uh, kind of founder founders team, right? So we can maybe look about the background of the CEO or the co-founder and just understand where they've come from, what they've done in the past, uh, just to, you know, get some more uh, valuable data points in terms of, you know, who the company is and who's, who's actually a part of it. I mean, maybe why, or what makes you want to write about it? Maybe it's someone you you know, in the industry or you followed for a while and they write, they started a new company or something like that. Uh, okay. It's great. So they have a status page, right? This is usually pretty straightforward or pretty standard. I should say for. SaaS platforms, right? So 100% uptime, hasn't had anything, um, any errors or any downtime presently or current, previously, I should say, app review times. Oh, this is cool. So they have a page, just what the average app review times look like. So currently on average iOS review times, test flight beta review time. So test flight is when you are rolling out for a beta preview for iOS, right? So seven hours for a beta review until it actually goes into flight. Uh, waiting for review takes about 14 hours. So this is like, this is good um, kind of industry information as well, since they're tracking this. I think this is cool. 
These are average review times, beta review times, and build processing times for iOS measured over the past two weeks, including time waiting, blah, blah, blah. These averages are meant only as an interesting point of reference. Actual review times, beta review times, and build processing times for any given app can depend on the var variety of factors. Where is this data coming from? The numbers shown represent an average of at actual app store review times, right? Test flight, again, is uh, the beta re for reviewing betas and getting that onto uh, an actual device. Build processing times. This is pretty cool. Uh, why are app store review times a thing? Right, so they link to apps, uh, iOS or Apple's app review documentation. Why is test flight beta review times a thing, right? So why is that important? Pretty much telling you why, uh, because it allows actual consumers to test external testers, right? Like they say here, outside of the company to test. So like I've tested apps that um, are gone through the test flight kind of beta builds as opposed to the app store builds. And you get to te test a, a specific app before it actually releases. Apple requires a review of the first build for each new version. Yep, so what's the app store connect build process? So this is cool. This is just going to grow with time in terms of like an industry leading, an industry metric that's going to be valuable to maybe teams, right? And it just gives some more credibility to, you know, what this looks like for runway clients, right? As opposed to maybe someone else is tracking this in there. The way they're building their mobile apps is, you know, for some reason, I'm not sure what the reason might be. I'm not an expert in this particular field. You know, why in review times are taking longer? Does it really depend on how you, uh, how you guys, I guess, perform or execute mobile application rollout. I'm not sure that could be a, something, you know, a, a conversation point or a topic we can touch on. Cool. So I know so far this section of the video is pretty long, but this is the longest part in terms of understanding the product or the company you're going to write for and develop, uh, you know, kind of an example piece for them just so you can show off some of your writing skills. And, you know, we don't have things like search console access, Google analytics access, but we do have, um, you know, SEMrush or Ahrefs just to get an idea. So if we come into something like SEMrush here and I'll copy the URL, we might not get that much results because it's a very new app, but it really depends on when it was released. So if I come in and search this domain all time, you can see we started getting some indexed or organic traffic back in 2021. So again, it's 2023. So we have some data to work off of. You see some big drops in October, big increases in January. You know, that's right around when what what happened. Some Google updates happen, could be, we could look at that a little bit further. But yeah, but we have some organic data to work off of. So some top organic keywords, right? Because we want to now develop some topical keywords or keyword segments that we may want to target in terms of acquisition thought leadership pieces. So one thing we could do, we'll get some more ready, but we also want to go back to the homepage of Runway and just look at some of their meta descriptions. So I'm using this... Uh, this uh, Chrome extension called Detailed SEO, it just gives me like title, description, URLs, right, canonicals, some headings. So this just gives me an idea, looking at some of this data, what they are uh, branding themselves as. So a better way to ship mobile apps. So mobile app shipping. Runway is a release platform for iOS and Android apps. So a release platform for iOS and Android. Put your releases on autopilot and keep your whole team in sync throughout. So we're going to want to look, they're probably going to want to be looking for a release platform for iOS and Android apps. That's going to be a topic that they're going to be competitive in, uh, shipping mobile apps, right? That's how they've structured the tone or what Runway is, a better way to ship mobile apps, right? Runway is our mobile org new home, collaboration. These are just some of the features. We discussed that already. So we want to look at maybe starting because if we actually take it back a step before we jump back into SCM Rush, some of their resources. So we're looking, at, we're going to actually look at their blog. We'll come down to the footer and just take a quick look at their blog, what they've already built. You know, they got, of, uh, they got what, about a page of of uh, a blog post here, articles, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Got 17 rows here. Um, they probably got over about 50 articles, 40 something articles here. So not that much considering they launched in 2021, um, but that's okay. You know, they, they have some, some traction. So mobile DevOps, app development, these are just some of the topics or the categories I should say, news, um, app development, mobile DevOps, DevOps, news, all right, app development, development, app development, how to set up, build and buy, app development, right? So we want to get an idea of how they're structuring. So it looks like mobile, obviously mobile, mostly mobile DevOps, app development, um, right? Release their silent killing, what your team can do about it. So we're probably going to look in mobile DevOps as our um, topic. We can use that. It's not really that important right now, but just to get an idea, you know, what they're what they're targeting, 
So they know we actually did our research and looked at the blog and have, you know, cre created some sort of outline to start. So we have a few things. So I'm going to open up a notepad really quick, right? Just to jot down some notes here, right? So we know why is my window keep expanding, right? So we know a few things. So one, we have some organic traffic, so we can use SEMrush to do some research, right? To do some research here. And you can sign up for SEMrush at a free trial uh, to get, I believe, sometimes you can find codes for a 30 day free trial, seven day free trial, right? And you could just do all your research beforehand. Research, organic data, organic search, or for, you, for I guess you could put keywords, just to understand what they are currently ranking for. Um, I'll probably put this at two. So one, we got to do, right. It's the, um, company research company slash product research, right? That's the, what we just did now. And this is just more looking at, uh, reviewing website, website, understanding, standing the product, the product slash features USP, which is the unique selling proposition. Uh, what pain points, pain points does the product solve? So we saw that some of that in the product. I mean, the, yeah, the product FAQs for audience. So web, or I should say uh, mobile DevOps teams, right? That's the audience it looks like here. And you want to do that. So that's, that's the first part here at SEMrush. I'm just using some of these HREFs, right? Just to do some research on organic keywords, understand what their uh, ranking kind of landscape looks like now. And that's just one option. I guess you could also do 2A would also be, let's do this 2A, 2B. You can uh, just use Google SERP, right? The Google SERP search engine results page. So we can go here and understand. So like we had that key term, right? So we'll look at, we'll look at something here. So SEMrush organic keywords, uh, create a list key terms slash topics. Cause they're not just gonna keyword stuff this article. And what do we have here? We had, um, ship mobile apps. We'll look at that. We'll look at some of the data there. That's why I have it under SEMrush ship mobile apps. Uh, what else did we say? We also looked at a uh, release platform for iOS and Android apps. Could, it's probably uh, something along the lines of, we could use that long tail. So release platform for iOS, mobile apps, release platform, right? That's more general. So we'll look at that. We'll just keep it right here for now. Ship mobile apps. Probably some people will be searching mobile app deployment. I assume that's a, another term that just comes to mind, just something naturally, just thinking about the topic. Um, so I'll use one of these and I don't, you know, ship mobile apps. And what I'm doing is, is I'm just Google, right? I'm just trying to see what comes up in the search engine results page. So ship mobile apps, Google, Apple, right? Runway team. So, right. They actually come up third for this specific keyword, which makes sense because that's something it looks like they were trying to target and it's actually a blog post. So that's cool. So if you can open that up right? How to ship mobile apps with less friction and more confidence. So they have something around this already created in July around this type of topic. So we can do more research to see uh, if how this page is performing. I mean, it's number three on this specific uh, keyword, but does that keyword uh, drive a lot of uh, search volume, right? Does it drive a lot of traffic to this SERP? So what we want to do is just keep note of this, um, right? So I'll just paste the URL there. You can do this in a Word doc. I just put it in a, a doc, a notepad, just to make it a little bit easier, a little bit quicker right now. So they actually come up here. So that makes sense. You know, it's something we had on our list and uh release platform for iOS and Android apps. This is pretty long tail. So I would expect them to come up, but wouldn't be surprised if they don't. Yeah. Cause there's a lot of other competition when it comes to this releasing platforms for iOS and Android apps. So medium article, right? We have Okta and the related questions, mobile scroll blog, um, a software, uh, best practices article, right? Wikipedia, a Microsoft subdomain that's ranking for this, talking about open source mobile platforms, publisher apps, so developers from uh, the Android subdomain, Kotlin, right? These are pretty well-known uh, brands, or I should say a uh, products, right? Cause Kotlin's a, a mobile application language, I guess you could use. And so is uh, Xamarin, right? So these might be what the intent is for these platform for iOS. So it's a different type of intent. It's not someone looking specifically on runway right now, but it might be, this might change. Seven breast frameworks and to use for cross platform. So they look at iOS and Android, right? That's cross platform, um, mobile. I wonder if I put this and see what we get. Build fire flutter. Yep. Yeah. So this might be an opportunity. I mean, it might be competitive, but it's something we can look into, uh, mobile apps release platform. Let's look at this. So mobile, let's restructure it a little bit. 
yeah, so look, mobile apps release platform, how to release a mobile app, Runway is up there already at number two. There's actually no ads on this SERP, which is interesting. Very interesting, actually. At least not at the top. Or unless my, I might be blocking them too. I forget about that. Uh, mobile app deployment. This might be an opportunity as well, but it might be competitive. So we don't know, but they're not ranking for here. Service now, back for app, orange business. Yeah, I don't see them anywhere. Global app testing, mobile app deployment versus mobile app release platform. It might be very different or very nuanced differences between the two, right? So it looks like they are ranking for some of these, but is it driving any traffic? So if we go back into SEMrush, I'll copy this one. Say we're performing well. And uh, let's go to keyword overview. I'll type in that one. We'll go back to our doc here. So we know uh, ship mobile apps is ranking, but we want to take a look at the data there in this just more specifically. And uh, yeah, we'll see what this offers because there might be some opportunities. I'll just take these two and make it simple right now. Please update metrics. Uh, so look, there's very little data possibly around these two keywords. When I say data, I mean like search volume, intent, actual historical data of people actually searching for these queries. So we'll let SEMrush do its thing and try to retrieve any potential data that might be associated with these keywords. There might not be any, right? So let's see, volume, see not applicable, very commercial intent driven, which is great. I mean, they already rank, but now we have to find competitors. It's another way to capitalize. So I'll let that update. So we go back to runway, better way to ship mobile apps, right? So we wanna look at this. Runway is a lease platform, put your releases on autopilot. What are some other things they're talking about here? A home for your mobile team, bring your own tools. So let's go back to our uh, product FAQs. How is Runway different? Runway sits one level up, and integrates with your CI CD tool your team, that your team is already using, right? So we talked about that before in the different integrations. It offloads certain tasks, for example, with automation that can distribute build to default test groups or tracks. That's great. Let's look at our features. So mobile control center. I wonder, a control center for your entire mobile team. I don't know if that's an industry uh, term, mobile control center. It might be, I'm not too sure. Uh, we can look that up. So uh, let's look up, we'll copy this. So mobile control center, access control center in your iPhone. Yeah, that's different. That's a feature for the iPhone, right? T-Mobile control center. Yeah, so this is not um, specifically mobile app control center. I don't think that it's more, yeah, it's more of a, like a feature. I know that's, that's what the intent's gonna be on that. So we gotta do more research. Let's see. Let's go back to our SEMrush. All right, so we don't have any volume metrics, right? But we know that they are detecting it as more as commercial intent keywords. Uh, there's a lot of results, but not a lot of volume, or at least so little, excuse me, so little volume that they don't know, or SEMrush doesn't know what to list it as. So what we're gonna do now is we'll go back to our, our domain review that we were looking at before for uh, Runway, right? Because we have to use this data that we have. We have our organic search position, so keyword overview, I think the app just froze a little bit, domain overview, right? And I'm gonna go jump back into our top organic keywords, view details. And specifically, we're gonna look at just non-branded. I don't think there's gonna be a lot of too much branded, but we definitely wanna to mitigate that. So as this loads up, and yeah, this is definitely gonna be a lengthy video because this process is not a 15 minute process. And I'm just trying to show you guys just a full walkthrough of what this looks like or some of the, the workflows and the process that I go through. Um, especially if I don't have access to Search Console or, or Google Analytics data or Adobe Analytics data for a particular domain that I may want to write about and may want to present a specific piece, you know, as a valuable and well-researched using first-party data would be ideal, but we got to make do with what we have. So uh, organic search position. So we got about, you know, 1.6K keywords for oneway.team. Uh, it's sorted by positions now. So this is what's ranking position one for. As of late, recently, we still may have to update some of these, see what it's changed like, but these are some of the, the keywords. So you can see they're pretty low volume, 20, 20, 30, 30. I mean, it adds up, definitely adds up. So I wanna sort by volume just to see what keywords it has ranked for in the past that have a very high volume. And they might be, yes, yeah, some of these one-off um, single word keywords. Yeah, CICD. So yeah, I don't expect us to, to really rank for that, or I say us, but I don't expect them to really rank number one for that now. In the current state, but we have some pretty high ones here. And we can actually, let's see, uh, we could look at more of the informational intent keywords only. Acquisition content's more, it's gonna be more along the lines of informational slash educational content within the industry or, with, or in a specific topic that also integrates a specific product feature. At least that's what I like to do, a specific product feature that 
help solve a problem on that topic and how, you know, runway or how that company does it differently or does it better, I should say. So test flight apps, 20. And then we could say, all right, what are some positions that are actually, you can also filter on a few different things here. You can filter on the position, right? You can look at maybe the top 50. So what's already doing well. Um, you could also look at uh, just specific URLs. Are there any blog URLs only that are ranking for that? Or non-blogs. What are some non-blog pages that aren't ranking for a specific keyword? Or we can filter out using advanced filters, using URL. You can say include URLs containing or not containing, right? Or exclude URLs containing slash blog, something like that. You just put in a directory. Um, but we want to find something pretty uh, difficulty-wise, right? We want to see... Uh, I usually say from zero to 50, we'll say 50 for now, just to get an ideal set there. So it cuts the keywords here by 300 keywords or so, which is still plenty. Uh, so trunk-based development. This is interesting. Choosing the right brand strategy for mobile development, trunk-based development. So this is actually searched, you know, has the search volume of 3.6 thousand K. I mean, 3.6 K. So that's around, you know, this is saying, hey, there's about, you know, 3.6 K searches for this specific keyword per month on average, I wouldn't say on average, but estimated. Keyword difficulty, pretty possible to rank for. Um, we already ranking for position 82 for this specific URL as of March 7th. Um, SERP features, so this just shows you SF is just what SERP features are served for this particular query when we search it in Google. So site links, people also ask image pack and video. Um, just to give us an idea of things we can possibly include or target with our content to uh, be a better, you know, put, place ourselves in a better position, literally, for this specific keyword. So that might be a good one to look at. Trunk-based development. Uh, we can actually look at the SERP, too, if we wanted to, to see what that looks like. So questions, what is trunk-based development? Um, so SERP and Atlassian's ranking here. Toptal, Circle C, Optimizely. So there's some pretty big names. Google, right, in terms of for this specific trunk-based development.com. In terms of uh, the competitors here, but it might be possible to actually rank for this keyword. And I mean, the only one that we have here is this blog, choosing the right balance for strategy for mobile. And I don't think, I mean, I'm just trunk-based development, right? So I'm just going to search the keyword trunk-based. Yeah, so they talk about it. So it might be it might be worth creating a, a whole article on it, trunk-based, trunk-based. They mentioned a few times towards the end. So what I would say is that we need to search this, right? Trunk-based development and look at some competitors. This is more of the manual way. There's some automated ways to do this, but so trunkbasedevelopment.com. So what is this? Um, I think it's a brand, uh, source control kind of branching model, right? How that's kind of a best practice, I guess, within an industry or one of the methods to doing uh, source control for app development, right? So this is, looks like the main website here. So we're probably not going to outrank this one, but you can see that this has a whole page or literally a whole site dedicated to this. So there might be some opportunity to increase content or develop content, I should say. So trunk based development, let's see what Alassian's doing. They have a whole article on it, um, not just a section. So this might be something worth writing about. And Google DevOps tech, trunk based development, Google Cloud. These might be some hard ones to compete against just because of the domains, but we can try. We can still, these are very like um, documentation heavy, right? These are very uh, informational, I should say. Not documentational, but very informational. Uh, we might be able to circle CI or circle CI, I should say. Right, this was published in June, seven minute read. It's a blog page, so they're ranking a blog. They are ranking blog pages. That's another thing we wanna look at. What type of pages are being served for the SERP, right? Is it mostly product pages? Uh, we know it's informational, but are they serving product pages, uh, documentational pages, right? These look like very informational kind of article related pages. Uh, we have images here, so we might wanna de definitely showcase some visualizations or images for this piece if we were writing. For it, trunk based developments and Git versus Git flow. So, this one's doing a versus piece, and this is kind of like a, a software comparison article, not necessarily an aggregator site, which is like G2 or Captera, but an actual article listing this out or talking about the differences between the two, the two different types of workflows. Optimizely. So, there is some, I would say there's some potential here. I and mean, maybe we can base this off of, you know, trunk based development and we could use that online summary, summary context, five minute overview. Right, so this is going to be a lot about this site just talks all about this type of workflow right this is kind of the the main site so there's a lot to be said with trunk based development and it might be an opportunity to bring in new users to learn about runway and how runway does it or how runway talks about trunk based development right 
Did they really work at scale? Have made use of this approach, but okay. How it stacks up. But there's lots of activity happening on trunk. Cause I really could. Da -da. So you want to read through this, right? Any releases, we have to understand what trunk based development is. It's good to understand it too. Um, any notes, that's their hot fixes, other notable approaches. So they actually talk about the other workflows or the other approaches to source uh, control, right? So that's cool. So it will also turn, it looks like they might have other pages about this or they might be linking out. Yeah, it looks like they're linking out to that, which is okay. Um, answering some questions like honestly about this. So there's no real call to action on this page either. It's just a uh, informational, right? Book of demos at the top, but understanding that too, you want to develop a call to action, even midway through the page helps too. sign up for a free trial, get started on utilizing your, you know, chunk based workflow or your other workflows and how to integrates with runway and understanding that if any, right. So we know that what this is ranking for isn't necessarily ranking. And actually, if you really want to think about it too, you can just redo this piece, update this content, right? It's already kind of marinated, I guess a little bit, right. But updating this piece of content might make sense more than creating a new piece, right? Cause there might be links already driven to it possibly. And there might be just some very useful information and in, in keeping, you know, uh, some of the original context here might make sense, but maybe we're missing out on some opportunities here in terms of topics. All right. So let's go back to SEMrush. So that could be one trunk based development, right? That's a pretty long tail, pretty high volume, pretty low difficulty. Um, we're already ranking for a page. So maybe improving this blog, I'd say would make sense. That's going to kind of what I say there. And then, you know, you want to go through a few of these. I think the advanced filters, one thing I like to do is uh, exclude keywords containing and then the brand name. I mean, it looks like you won't have a lot of them here because it looks like we've already kind of filtered onto them. Right. But that's something I like to do because we're looking at non-branded keywords. That's going to drive traffic. Get flow diagram 390. We can talk about this choosing the right. See, this is also choosing the right branch. looks like it's, it talks about these different workflows. So this might be something that we can improve overall, how to set up a CICD pipeline for your right. So GitHub action event or variable variables. This might be a good one, pretty hard difficulty to rank for there. Um, or I would say harder uh, 50 scale from SEMrush, right? You have to look at the SERP landscape and really identify that. Um, let's see what else we can look at umbrella merge conflict. This might be a good one to look at very high search volume, right? Very low difficulty, informational intent. We have a blog already, um, getting impressions for this already ranking for this. Let's see where, where are we ranking for this 13. So almost on page one, maybe worth looking into improving some of this, right? we got to look at the land. So I'm going to show you how we can do that. So that's kind of the next step here. Let's say we, we take one of these. Um, so let's comparing the top 10 and obviously you guys can see, I'm not an expert in this subject matter, right? I'm not an expert in a mobile app, mobile development, right? A mobile app development. That's not my expertise. Uh, but I'm gonna show you guys how you can do this. What is fast lane 260. This might be a good one to focus on later, how to build a perfect fast lane pipeline for iOS. And then we can, this one was already created and setting up fast lane. So this is very technical driven, which is great where there might be some topics that we might be missing here. Possibly really depends where oh, we got to see what the SERP looks like for this particular keyword and see why, um, uh, I mean, we're at eight, this page is at page eight. So it's on page one, but what's, what's going to push us up to, uh, top three, right? That's what we want to understand. Adding screenshots is great for this type of work deployment with fast lane. Um, I'm not sure if this is deployment just within, in general, I'm not sure if this is use, using, um, like a fast lane is a type of workflow you can utilize within runway. You'll see how the process for your next iOS app So that's, I guess this is, this is their call to action, which is great to have it here. Um, we also, I would say, keep it at the, do they have it at the bottom? Yeah, they have one here. I might've missed that on the other page too, when I thought it wasn't there. Okay. So let's just pick one. Let's see. We're going to want to take note of this. So I would open up a notepad. Uh, we talked about looking at the Google SERP, right? This is understanding, understanding the search intent, intent of a query, right? So this is just understanding what is being served when you make a search, what's being shown, uh, is it product pages, product pages, right? Is it blogs? Is it, um, at, uh, like software or review aggregators, review aggregator sites? Right. We have to understand what the intent is, what's being searched for, what well, what Google serving back when you search for a particular product to understand, is it possible to rank for maybe a blog? Is it, we have to create a, a product page? Is it, does it make more sense that way? 
um, and then SERP features. Um, what are the SERP features? So SERP features like the people also, also ask images, are there being videos being served in the middle of the, the landscape? So when we're searching, are there, are there videos like being shown right in the SERPs? So like this one? Yeah, we have a video section here. So it might make sense to even make a video that integrates or it's embedded into the, the product, you know, to add more value to that specific, I'm sorry, a video embedded into the article that adds more value to the overall product and that page as well, right? You're only going to do yourself more justice by making it more comprehensive. So cool. What are the SERP features? Understand what that is. We talked about that. Uh, so now three, um, we're going to choose, right? Choose a uh, keyword and let's just say keyword topic. Cause it's not, we're not focusing on that keyword. We're focusing the topic around that. So choose keyword topic. In this case, I think we're going to use um, 82. Right. Uh, yeah. We're going to use this as a kind of a proposal, right? We're going to say, Hey, you know, love what you're doing with the company and love the product. Find it very interesting. I noticed you guys are, you know, ranking for, I mean, this could go along with maybe applying for a job application or something like that. But I noticed you guys have an article about choosing the right balance strategy for mobile development that does rank for trunk based development, which is a very high volume search term. You guys are, you know, on position 80 or in position 82 or, you know, 10 pages deep into this, this search query. Um, I rewrote the article for you so you guys can cover more of the landscape and more, uh, of the topical substance for that particular keyword that'll probably rank better, um, for that particular, um, topic, less ums and, <laughs> and more, uh, professional wording there, but. Yeah, you can pretty much come to them that and say like, hey, I rewrote this article for you guys, keeping a lot of the, the tone and voice that you guys included into this piece. But I wanted to add a little bit more value to that and some recommendations here. Here it is. You know, here's my here's my Google Doc. So what I would like to do now is look at uh, trunk based development. I say we're going to we're going to rewrite this article so I can show you how that looks like. Instead of starting from scratch, we can rewrite it to be OK. Cool. So trunk based development, we're looking at that keyword and you could also do this. If you don't have SEMrush, you can, um, come into Google, right. And use just the, the recommendation. So trunk based development, trunk based versus Git flow, trunk based development versus Git flow. So diagrams, branching strategy, feature flags. So these are just topics we're probably going to talk about, uh, understanding what this is trunk based development and Reddit. That's probably just looking for information specifically on Reddit for trunk based development, uh, trunk based development, hot fix pros and cons. So. We're going to want to talk about these different topics. And if we come back to SEMrush, it's going to be similar to what's there in terms of the keyword variations, questions, and, uh, the, the different, um, uh, topics we're going to want to include overall. So specifically questions are good too. Great. So what I like to do is I actually also when doing the writing part too, so I like to, I can use SEMrush, but you could also use a product called a uh, phrase. And I like to do this because I use it in combination with another with another, um, another application to do some of the outlining. So I have this, uh, phrase at IO, right. I'm in my documents folder. You could sign up for this tool if you want. Um, it's relatively cheap, cost effective, and I'm in the background now. And all I'm going to do is create a new document, uh, workflow, create new content, targeted query. It's going to be what we were looking at before. So trunk based development. So this is what I want to pretty much is telling you what I want to, to perform a competitive search on. So again, it's going to look at the Google SERP based off this specific search query and do some of the stuff we were looking at, or as I was explaining a little bit more automated English country, us, right. Top Google results, specific results from a specific domain. I'm gonna use the Google results, create document. So what this is going to do is give me kind of a word document here. I have my content brief tab and my content section, right? Um, don't have to explain too much there, but now I have the sidebar. It's going to say phrase will process the top 20 Google search results for this specific query. So that's kind of what I did manually before I'm going to say, let's go. And I'm going to change this a little bit later. So let me move, um, move my head over here. So we're going to let that do its search. It's pretty much doing, it's going on to Google typing in trunk based development and getting all the SERP data here for us. This is where things start to move a little quicker. All right. So now trunk based development, the top 20 results. So I want to actually change this. So I like to do, I go to this little pencil mark up here and I like to just select the top 10 as a preset. So top 10 selected, right? It does the top 20. I'm going to look at just the top 10. I'm going to hit save and it's just going to recondense that. So now it tells me average word counts, average headers, how many links are included into these pages. Uh, that's in the SERP, the top 10, how many images are used, right? I can, there's a lot of features I could use here for phrase. 
but I'm going to show you what I like to do because I use it in conjunction with another tool. So um, let's get started, right? We have all the data here, H2s that our different competitors are using. We can, we can actually click in and, and see what the content is specifically, which is great. Ranking third, how long is the word count for that particular article on Google? All right, some pretty good information just to understand the landscape here. But what I like to do is uh, come over to the export option here and this Excel SERP data. So SERP data. So this will export the SERP data that I just created here or just ran into a Excel spreadsheet. So I'm going to save that, right? I'm going to open it or let that open, enable editing, right? So this is the top 10 results I got from my phrase search, essentially just pulled it from the SERP of trunk based development descriptions, um, Google rank. Great. So you can see there's another, move my, my head over here. There is another or a few other tabs here, headers, topics, heat maps. So headers, um, I want to look at headers too, right? So I want to understand um, some of what's going on here in terms of the headers being used, but I also under understand the topics, right? So let's jump into the topics first, essentially the keywords that are being used for uh, this specific uh, SERP uh, query that we performed. And I want to get rid of all these single keyword topics, right? merges, uh, workflow, branching files, commits, a review, repository. Actually, I might not get rid of all. A review, repository, flags, quality, uh, pull, stage. They're just not very informative. A delivery, in context they are, but that's why we want these longer branch or longer tail keywords. Capability, we'll remove that. Toggles, remove. Um, this is fine. Core team, dev team. It's a lot here, which is great. Uh, check time, approvals, cadence. All right, it looks okay for now. So what I wanna do is I have all these topics that I want to essentially, these are all the topics that our competitors are talking about in terms of the long tail. And I wanna also make sure I'm including or talking about these topics as well, just as a draft, a first draft, right? Before I start adding any customized content, right? Specific to runway. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. And there's another tool I like to use, um, it's called ZimWriter. Might have heard of it, might not have heard of it. Let me go to run it now. And it's a really well fleshed out uh, tool for writing and developing SEO blog posts, op very highly optimized. It uses OpenAI's API, uh, but the prompting in it, in terms of uh, how you execute or utilize the user inputs to create really good output, um, it's pretty neck level. It's pretty, pretty good. And it runs on your computer. So anyway, I'll include a link in the description if you guys wanna check it out. Uh, really cost effective too. They have a monthly subscription or a lifetime subscription. Again, the application installs in your computer. It's not a web app that you visit a, a site URL, which is great because you can use it anywhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch that. So ZimWriter runs version 6.05. I'm gonna launch the SEO blog writer for today. And you see, I have a few options here. All right, so our title. Um, we don't really have a title just yet, but what I wanna first do is, um, actually we'll, we'll create the title first. We'll start right there, right? We wanna create a title. So we have a title that we were looking at before. Let me jump back to our article. So how to build a perfect fast lane pipeline for iOS. Actually, this wasn't it. That's not the right article. We have to look at, um, where was it? It was the other one. Let me go to my document here. Let's see. I forgot the page. I think I closed it before. Merge queues. Oh, this is it. All right. Choosing the right balance strategy for mobile development. Okay. That's the title we have, right? So I'll put that in. Choosing the right branch strategy for mobile development. Now we need to put in an H2, our first H2, H2. What's a good H2 here? Uh, choosing the right balance strategy for mobile development. What other H2s do we have here? Headings, not really properly structured, I would say. Let me see how we're tagging things on this page. We don't have an H2 until we get to mobile considerations. So we can create some. Um, so let's go ahead and go back to phrase right? We can look at, so I'm going to paste our title in here. We can look at some of the H2s that our clients, I mean, sorry, our competitors are using. That's another thing we can use and look at what is trunk-based development, get flow versus trunk-based, um, how to implement trunk-based development, how vertical system, version control systems change the world. What is trunk-based development? I think that's a good one to start with. Um, so I'm going to put that in and then I'm going to jump back into phrase. I mean, sorry, Zim writer. I'm going to put that as my second H, I mean, my first H2, number one, required. So these two are required and the rest are optional. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my spreadsheet that I, 
and I'm going to copy that list of keywords here. And then I'm going to come back to Zimwriter and they have a few methods. You can create the H2 using AI. So it'll just create the H2s, I guess, leveraging the information you gave to H2 in the H1, essentially. Um, I like to use method three, which is create H2 using AI and SEO keywords. So not only is it going to use um, OpenAI for this, but it's going to also leverage the keywords I inputted here and copied from my, my project before. So I'm not sure if I maxed out in terms of the, in terms of the box here, but usually you don't have to get rid of the white space. Um, it looks like I cut off a few keywords. So I want to see if there's a, a maybe a limited space without the white space. I'm not sure. All right. So we got the verbal workflow process. It looks like we stopped around continuous integration dev team. Okay. Why can't I find it? Feature branch, uh, development workflow, deployment workflow, development workflow. Um, we'll take the rest of these because we want these in here. Copy. We'll paste those in effective workflows. Usually I don't know why it's cutting off. I think that's it. That might be, that might be the limit here. Effective workflows, application delivery. Yeah. So what I would say is I, I didn't know there was a actual limit to the amount you can have in here. You want to condense this even further. So anything generic, we would actually want to remove. So this is a good thing. So pipeline repository, right? Active branches, hotfix branch, trunk branch, go through this a little bit more. It's team size. No, I don't, maybe I don't want that. Um, Paul Hammett's no, uh, let's see version control, previous versions. That makes sense. Um, let's see what else we got. A couple, couple of developers, individual developers, uh, core team, dev team, workflows, application delivery, uh, bad merge, merge request, delivery speed. So that might be, that might be key to this, to some of these topics, check time, uh, class concepts, series of stages, common practice, digital capabilities. I like to also do is maybe to dupe anything. I don't think there was any duplicates, but, but there might've been. Uh, let's see what else we have. Intermediate branches, trunk branch, DevOps team, blast radius. I'm not too sure what that means in terms of for this, but it might mean something specific. We'll take that and I'll paste it again. It looks like we stopped at continuous. Let's see, best selling continuous delivery. That doesn't make sense. Application delivery. And then we'll go ahead here and clear some of this white space up, which I don't think you have to. Cadence for release tracking, class concepts, DevOps practice, continuous delivery, and DevOps. All right, so now we're going to go into the topic section. We've already removed anything that we might not seem as, you know, all the single word keywords, pretty, you know, broad keywords here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy this, paste it here. SEO keywords. So headers, I'm going to use... Um, what I want to do, I'm going to add a filter. And so we added our topics into our uh, manual keyword section here for in Zimwriter. And then what I'm going to do is go back to that spreadsheet. I'm going to go to the headers tab here and I'm going to really focus on, let me go home. I'm going to add a filter and I just want to look at H2s and H1s. Got it. And then I'm going to delete um, some of the ones that don't make sense or just some of the single word one conclusion, common pitfalls, git flow and pros and cons. Uh, what's next? Let's say summary, Git flow. Um, what I'm going to do is actually go to data, remove duplicates. Okay. So there's only two duplicates found. Everything else is pretty unique. What is trunk based development? We saw that benefits of trunk based, the cons of trunk base. We saw that already. Um, let's see. Conclusion. What is Git branching feature tiles? Thanks. Right. We want to get some uniqueness to these. All right, so we want to remove anything that has any brands too in it. Claims, caveats, smaller teams, Google Cloud, remove that, Circle Sci. All right, so let's say we go with that. So you go through your list, we'll copy those headers, and I'm going to paste those into this method three box. And I'm going to go ahead and try method three. So this is going to call the OpenAI's API. I connected my API key to the tool. So it's a lot cheaper um, than most tools. And there you go. So it, go ahead and it goes ahead and makes those additional H2s, right? So uh, benefits of trunk-based development, popular Git branching strategies, Git flow versus trunk-based development, Git flow hub, Git lab flow, right? Is trunk-based development right for you? Pull requests are still branches, obligations for developers. What is this? Continuous integration changes that take too long to complete. My own case studies, maybe not including that. 
enabling chunk-based development with deployment pipelines, concurrent development and, and consecutive releases, not doing a CI pipeline on that single branch. Not sure what that means. Um, manual version number maintenance for dependencies. Okay. Um, what we can do as well is look at all the sections and make sure it makes a, a topical flow. So we have, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, kind of cut these and paste them up, right? Is trunk based development right for you? Um, I really like the, the topic here. And this is where you, you have to do some customizing too. We just can't have the AI do everything for us. I really like the um, use the right tool for the right job um, kind of heading here in terms of, you know, being able to kind of promote runway possibly as a, as a option there that's using keywords, right? We can also create the, create them using AI. So I was going to show you guys what this looks like. If I just do try method two, it should rewrite all these actually. Let's give it a little bit. You see it does it, but it's not as specific. Maybe very general. So defining a branch strategy, factors to consider, long-term goals, mobile platform. Um, we could try it again. What is branching? Types of branching, benefits, challenges, best practices, version control, release management strategies. All right. So some of this is actually pretty good. Um, but then if we do with this, I think it gets a little bit more specific. That's what you want. There we go. So overview, benefits, popular GitHub branches, chunk-based development versus Git flow, advantages, requirements, how to assess if chunk TBD, so chunk-based development is right for your project right limitations automating impact uh best practices so some of this we also have to take in consideration that there is content here already and we have mobile considerations git flow how it stacks up final thought it's a pretty short piece but there we go so using this product using this tool we can get some ideas right we're using some research that we already found through some other tools through a phrase or semrush getting some of those headings to give us ideas or give the ai some ideas to generate our custom headings here now there's a few options we can enable. So the H2 section length, so this is the paragraph. I like to keep this on medium. It does also two dollar signs, meaning it just costs less for API tokens. And if you guys are interested, I can show you how to set that up or get Zimwriter set up with your API key from OpenAI. Uh, voice is optional, right? So I like to keep this um, personal, right? So it could say you more than, you know, you, they, things like that. So it talks about the person. Professional, maybe too little, too salesy. Um, we can enable literary devices. Um, lists, FAQs, T's, and uh, tables can create tables using Markdown, right? It can use Markdown for the actual product itself or for the the, the piece of art content that we're creating, right? In the style of, um, you can. this is where you can choose any voice, I guess, like Al Capone is an option here. Uh, you can, someone maybe in the professional field that might make sense, you know, writing the voice of like Steve Jobs, right? If you want to. Uh, you can use auto style. You don't have to use it at all. I'm just going to keep it blank. Uh, keywords per subheading between one and 10. I just keep it at five. Uh, these are the manual keywords I put in, right? So this is just what I grabbed like before. I grabbed from our Excel spreadsheet that we exported from phrase and our topics, right? That we wanted to talk about. Um, output in non-English. No, I want English. And then use best of two for H2 plus FAQs. I'm not going to do that. So now what I can do is I can start the SEO writer. It's going to take about three to seven minutes to complete. And it gives me a little process indicated in the bottom right hand corner. So as that's being created, I'm going to come here and minimize this, go back into phrase. So choosing the, I'm going to reach reformat because I'm just going to build it in here. Uh, we're going to get some optimization scores. Don't rely too heavily on this, but I'm just going to bring it up. Uh, choosing the right branding strategy. It's going to initiate the caps for this for mobile development. All right, that's our H1. We're going to paste in the rest of our content when it's done in the next few minutes. Uh, but I like to get it set up here. And let's see, I'm going to go ahead and grab, do we have trunk-based development? So we have copy image. I'm just going to grab this image because I'm going to use it, right? Just as part of the article to show that we're rewriting this piece. Final thoughts. So these are just internal links. So on my screen, you guys can't see, but it says about 24% complete to creating that uh, blog article. So we're almost done there we could go ahead and review what we did. So we chose a keyword topic, right? And we performed, so we chose keyword topic and we performed performed analysis. So we looked at uh, SEMrush data, or you can use, I mean, whatever data. So we performed analysis, meaning we did some SEMrush data. We looked into that, seeing what other terms or keywords might be relevant to the topic. And uh, we use phrase, right, to, also look at the SERP landscape. So what are the competitors writing? What is their um, 
what does their content structure look like? This too many tabs is getting a little too confusing here. So phrase also phrase.io uh, to also look at the SERP landscape and uh, content structure from competitors. Competitors, here we go. Uh, choose keyword topic slash segment, I like to call it. Um, I want to say it's analysis. We're just really just doing research, perform research. Analysis to me is more um, calculations involved in the data. So we uh, use phrase, SEMrush data to gain um, insights. I would say to gain insights to uh, ranking opportunities, ops, ranking ops, uh, because we don't have search console data. I like to, use, like to leverage the first party data first, but this gives us some ideas. Um, we use phrase to also look at the SERP landscape and the content structure from competitors to give us a baseline of the topics we should talk about. Three, uh, so we have to put our own spin on it, um, customize uh, article output. Actually, before we get there, so then we we four we imported um, insights into uh, Zimwriter, so ZW Zimwriter, right? So that's gonna and this helped us uh, structure structure slash draft article using uh, targeted topics or keywords, you can say, but. It's up to you. Import it inside to Zimwriter. This is going to save us time. This is where we save a lot of time for writing and composing the piece. And then we're going to have to add our own spin on it in terms of the, the tone of voice. The So the audience, obviously, we have here is um, uh, more developer-centric. I'm actually surprised. I think it's at 95% complete. It won't let me open up another SEO blog writer until it's done. But So there we go. I'll open this in a second. It finished. Um, audience personality. Oh, I didn't, I didn't select it, but it is an option. So I can redo it if I want to, we can give it specific personality. And these personalities are based off of, let me see, if I can find it again. Um, the brand archetypes. So we have, you know, outlaw, magician, hero, lover, jester, every man, caregiver, ruler. These are based off of the brand archetypes pretty much from this site. So it gives us more, it tailors the content more towards that specific audience. Right, we can do maybe provide structure, innovation. We could have probably done creator, so this mobile application or something like that. So you can play around with the settings, right? I'm just gonna show you what type of output we can get. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the the content piece that it outputted here. See if I can find it. Here we go. Just opening doc, copying it, and I'm gonna paste it into phrase. Okay, so I'll paste it into here. All right, so it's cool that it tells us how much was spent. So estimate 17,000 tokens spent and it developed about 4,773 word article, right? And that equates to about 35 cents, right? Assuming we have the calculation of two cents for every 1,000 tokens. That's just what OpenAI charges uh, and how they monetize the use of their API. So he spent about 35 cents to get this. Uh, so we can delete that, but it's cool that they include that. Settings, it tells us the settings we used, right? So we already know that. And then this is our H1, we can remove this. Right, so now we can read through this. I'm surprised it didn't. Oh yeah, um, it doesn't read markup phrase. I forgot. So I can all copy. I'll copy this, and you can use a tool called. Um, you can use this tool called All Docs, or as another one that you can just. I forget what it's called. Um, Markdown Editor. Oh, I think I saw it. Yeah, Dillinger.io is a good option too. So I can. I use this in the pad. We can paste our our markdown and we'll get the output here on the side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this. The other other option here, you just upload the document and choose the output you want. So you can have that flexibility as well. So I'm gonna delete this, I'll paste this in and I have to go grab the image again. Uh, but you see our score went percent Don't pay attention to this. Um, we're not gonna rely on scores. But what we want to look at now is I have Grammarly installed so that helps you with some punctuation or grammar that needs to be fixed. So choosing the right branding branching strategy for mobile development. Are you struggling to pick the perfect branching strategy for your mobile development project? With so many options available, it can be difficult to decide which one is best for your specific needs. In this article, we will discuss the various branching strategies and help you choose the right one for your project. The use of mobile technology has grown exponentially in recent years, and it's only natural that companies are now looking to expand their reach for developing mobile applications. However, before you start development, it's important to that you have a clear understanding of the different kinds of branching strategies available and how they can affect your project. That's pretty comprehensive. So, right, by understanding differences between each strategy, you'll be able to determine which one is best suited for your particular project and ensure its successful completion. 
Read on to learn more about choosing the right branching strategy for your, de- for your mobile development. Maybe you'll change that last sentence, but you get the idea. So it still needs to be a proofread. Overview of version control systems. Take the example of a mobile application development team at a large company. They have multiple blogs working on different parts of the app simultaneously and need to ensure everyone is working from the same version of code of the code, right? You can read through this. The components combined together with this training efficient code base, ensuring only that only approved changes are released in production about the benefits of branching strategies. Transitioning to the next section about the branching of the strategy, we will further illustrate how teams can use these tools for better collaboration and faster delivery cycles. Benefits of branching strategies among right more efficient release uh, cadences. Whoops, I didn't mean to delete that. Right, and we could pretty this up a little bit. When I have lists like that, I like to bold the topic of reference. Now, popular Git branching strategies. The master branch is the main line of code. Long live feature branches, mass, the master and the merge, short lived features from the master. Um, up next, we'll take a look at trunk based development versus Git flow, right? So this is another, they talked about popular Git branching strategies. Now they're gonna talk about trunk based development versus Git flow. Our two popular branching strategies for mobile development, right? Both trunk based development and Git flow. So we have to decide if we're gonna keep this hyphenated throughout the whole thing, the whole, the whole, throughout the whole article. We'll go ahead and do that. Advantages of trunk base, requirements for trunk base, implementing, right? So um, anyone, issues with any one change, right? Freezes, code freeze or delays, smaller blast rates for any bugs, trunk based, trunk based. There's probably a way to do this all in bulk in terms of the one word, but what, who adding when, it's an extra comma, right? So we wanna go through this and even read it. I'm just going through grammar, grammarly recommendations now, but we wanna understand how to assess if TBD is right for your project. I wouldn't put TBD. I would put how to assess if trunk based development is right for your project. So that might've been something we didn't need before. I think I added, um, did I add it in here? I don't know if it is still in here. It might've changed. Um, trunk based, feature based workflow, right? Something like this. I just removed it. And I would go ahead and, and bold these things here, right? And just again, go through all of this. If you have a subject matter expert to review this, but again, this is trying to build a portfolio, give it a, a writing example to maybe uh, the company you're trying to apply for. So we have continuous integration and its role in um, TDD. That's not what we want. We want develop, right? TDD might be a uh, like very highly used acronym within the space, but I'm not sure. So, I mean, in, in the title or in the H2, I like to actually include the full word. Um, make sure the successful deployment continue with consequence of taking too long to complete changes, right? So it tells you some cons here, uh, deployment process. <clears throat> <clears throat> Great. Best practices for pull requests, right? Limits of TDD. So they might be still calling it TDD and we can search this. We'll do some search so we can do right. TDD. Is that something people search test driven development is called TDD. Yeah. So <clears throat> Google knows, right? Google knows. And we'll go back to phrase. Uh, limitations of TDD, test-driven development. It is hyphenated too. Real time, real time, how it could impact. Automating TDB, say that in this um, development, right? So we have a structure here and we can remove or add pieces as we see fit, but we have some context and this stuff has been talked about. The AI knows and understands some of these things already. You know, has a lot of information. Um, impact of TDD, on long-term product uh, success, success. And then we have some frequently asked questions since we asked it to insert that. Also noticed it has the list because we instructed it to include lists, right? And we kept it pretty, so what, like, it's pretty natural in terms of comprehensiveness. So, and uh, TDD, right? Um, the two bedrocks of modern development. It's a surprise, big, a bit surprising that more developers aren't familiar with this duo. After all, no successful app is built alone. Whether you're working on a small scale project or an enterprise initiative, the importance and effective collaboration among agile and development teams can't be overstated. So what does it take to create effective workflows for mobile development? Here's a quick list, right? Well defined process. And this, um, this is maybe where you could say input, um, how, right? This is where you have to put the, the USP or the unique selling proposition of runway or how it fits into solving this problem. How does runway give you a clear definition of roles and responsibilities for each member of the I mean, How does it give you well-defined processes for rapid feedback cycles? Does it? We don't know, but input how runway um, solves uh, 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 these effective or how, I don't know, out of it, how does it showcase or bring to light or, you know, how runway, you know, presents these effective workflows in its, I don't know, in its application. Input how 
input or let's say insert context on how how runaway does this right because this is going to be important i'll make that red and this is like kind of a note note to self right uh the impact of td on long-term products helps the product finally using a branch strategy and then we could say maybe how does somewhere here we can say how does runaway leverage branch strategy right what is the cost of implementing a trunk-based web development trunk-based web development what is the cost? And, again, and then overall, TBD has many advantages, but it entails investment both time and resources. Well, Runway can help you with both of those in terms of reducing time and resources um, by implementing a trunk-based development workflow within Runway or something like that, right? Input. So we have to put that input, the benefit of using use of Runway, Runway while implementing a trunk-based uh, dev workflow. Right. So this is something we want to also, this is part of creating the unique piece of content and then tailoring all these frequently asked questions or topical content into specifically specific ideas or specific sections that are steering the user towards runway, right? Why runway is important. Why runway solves this problem. Or if you're thinking about this question, you know, how, how does the continuous integrations affect the development process? Well, blah, 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 blah. This is where we can you know, include runway and this is how it handles integrations and continuous integration process. And it affects, this is X, Y, and Z of how it affects the development process, so on and so forth, right? There's some uh, brand aspect we have to include there. So how does trunk based development compare to other branching strategies? What are the benefits of automating the development? So maybe, um, I'm not sure what happened here. Automation reduces the, uh, oh, continuous integration allows features. Oh, maybe it's this way. Maybe it was, uh, this could have been the format. So automate test can identify, right? So we might want to, boom, I'm not sure. Uh, the markdown must have got messed up. Advantages of TV deployment pipelines are clear. We don't forget about the other advantages, right? These are all just in the FAQs also help, right? Conclusion, um, I like to fix this. So what I do is I'll take my heading, I'll take my heading, the H1, and I'll come down here and what I'll do is I'll say, write a conclusion heading for the article about choosing the right branch type for mobile deployment. I'll say, write five conclusion headings, right? And then Zimwriter allows you to actually launch these commands while actually being in different applications this is, since it's on the desktop, right? So if I go back to Zimwriter, you can see I have commands or triggers, right? So if I do control one, it's going to initiate my magic command trigger, which magic command just lets you um, kind of give you any prompt you want. So something like this, I can tell it to write five conclusion headings. I would highlight it, hit command one, you see the Zim writer box pops up and it's going to respect my, or kind of read my command and give me the output right with, with where I'm working in. And now we have you'll find a random channel for your mobile development project, achieving success with the project benefits, considerations, making the most. So better than conclusion is what I'm trying to find, right? Finding the right branch for your mobile project, uh, mobile development project. I'd say no, achieving successful mobile brand with the appropriate branching strategy. No, I kind of like the last one. Just anything is better than conclusion. Uh, making the most of your mobile development project with ideal branching strategy, right? And it kind of sums up everything we were talking about, right? What's uh we were talking about benefits, pros and cons, comparisons, but what's the ideal one, right? And then ultimately it comes to choosing the branching strategy for mobile development. You need to decide what works best for the team. It's important to investigate the truth of each before each theory before settling on one, then implementing a process and deploy pipelines with careful consideration, da, 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 da. And we could say, you know, uh, uh, runway allows you to use multiple, any or any of these, um, branching strategies of your liking, right? Reducing, reducing time and I don't know, reducing deployment time, something like that. You can write, you can fix that. So this is something you have to add. So essentially it's just, I'll put example. Uh, you want to input how runway helps with this input, how runway integrates this thought, right? So that's something. And, uh, you know, again, just go, you want to go through this and make sure that it makes sense. Maybe it's hitting all the right points. So if we come back here, that's not the one we want, right? We'll come back and we talk about Git flow. So I'm going to copy this image and come back into phrase, Git flow. 
product based development, Gitflow are two part. The main difference between base is Gitflow is how they handle, right? So Gitflow. So I'd probably put this here, right? Because that's maybe what we're looking for in terms of a uh, using the tag master branch, right? For Gitflow, we can uh, copy link address tags, mark a snapshot. So if we come back to phrase, um, I'm not sure if we talk about tags. So you might not even talk about tags. So what I can do is to um, make this make more sense or just streamline it, right? For Gitflow, we can say, come back to phrase, I mean, difference, both blah, blah, blah. Um, this allows for Gitflow on our hand using multiple shirtless branches that are merged into the branch from This process can lead to fewer word conflicts. And then we could say, uh, or copy and paste, you know, uh, Gitflow uses a, right, we could come back here. Gitflow uses a master tag branch. Right, uses a tag my branch development version release feature hot fixes hot branches we're talking a little bit more about git flow uh work in progress code is contained within branches that are created blah 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 this is more information on git flow so what i could say is too i'll come into phrase and i'll paste that that are created and merge back so up to this and then i can say reword the input above and i'll highlight all this and I'll do control one and Zimwriter will read that command, use the call the open AI's API and read with the input above. Yeah, I think this is it right here. Makes use of a variety of branches, including tag branch. Yeah, so now I can just take this out and I have a custom piece of content that I created using what I already had, but you know, rewording it. And we can still get our, our internal links right back from where we had in our original article. So I'll copy link, right? Cause we want to add these internal links. Um, let's see, I had it here. Uh, tags, right? Tags, git flow. If you want to, you know, re, um, copy link. If you want to reference, I should say the main URLs or the, where the its original source information came from, of course, um, trunk base got to fix all these. They're all going to come up, right? So that's an aspect we just did there. And you can see how much time to speed it up. I mean, I already created a whole article, a good draft, you know, it's not ready to, to, to send out, but we have to create, if you want to create these examples and build that portfolio, you know, this, this takes a lot of, a lot can build a lot of practice up to that. The strategy, how you format the document. Again, you can be additional recommendations at the top saying, Hey, we need to add a video, uh, more infographics, uh, trunk based. So let me get copy image, right? Trunk based stuff. So let me go back uh, to phrase. And trunk, when did we first mention trunk based? We mentioned a lot. Uh, best branching strategies, probably just try it. Trunk versus Gitflow. So we have, um, you might have to restructure this, right? Gitflow is a writer of blah, blah. We have that. And then, and then trunk base. Maybe we could have, whoops, we'll come back. And I think this is a copy image. Um, I lost my tab. Here we go. Copy image, right? We can paste the other one. So we had here, I believe, trunk based and then Gitflow. Go back to phrase. So we know they're popular. I could probably get rid of this trunk base. And then we can do trunk based development, right? Is the system library could be sorted blah, 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 blah. So it shows that. And then it shows trunk based. And we can probably trunk based TBD, right? Let's see. Yeah, this is why I don't want to trunk based development. So there is no hyphen. So they actually, they don't use a hyphen. Okay. So you would have to fix that. You can do a control all, replace all type fix. Uh, but they don't use a hyphen. In some cases they do, it looks like. So I guess they don't really, it doesn't really matter. But um, creating our, we're using the infographic there. What I wanted to do is just link um, trunk-based development, one line, so just kind of link back, right? So trunk-based development. Or if we have an internal page, you can link to another internal page on trunk-based development or, you know, to the source where this originally came from with the, with the uh, information originates from trunk-based, trunk-based. I'm just going to hyphenate it. Does anyone change? So now we can go back to our article, other notable approaches. Um, I think this is something we should talk about just because it makes sense to also um, mention these because I think that's the whole point of the, right? We're talking about right strategy for mobile development. And building how to assess continuous integration, uh, consequences of taking too long. So this, here are some challenges, uh, technical, da -da 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 -da, personal, financial. I think this is how it's supposed to be structured. Sometimes the table has got to be, reformatted a little bit. See if I see uh TBD, trunk based development. Uh I don't know how much I would want to add TBD in here because it's just not well known by Google whatever the of automating trunk based deployment, uh automating uh trunk based 
deployment with deployment pipelines are clear, but don't forget, make that change. Okay, so now we look at some of the other sections here. And yes, uh, call to action, right, is gonna be a course. And that looks like it's already there. Uh, insert, insert CTA, uh, free trial, right? It could be the free trial, sign up if that's it. And that's going to be um, kind of right in there on the bottom of the page, just to ensure that we're covering that. So, I mean, this is a, a good draft, right? We can, we can definitely utilize it in terms of the, what we're targeting, right? What, uh, I mean, internally linking to other pages is going to make sense. We got to find what that looks like or understand what that looks like to make it a fully fledged kind of thought out process as well. Um, yeah. So, um, that's kind of the last step here. So we can export this. I mean, I would still, if you were going to really send this over, still thoroughly go through this, right. That's just kind of, you know, after making some optimizations with Zim writer structure draft, and then write, um, import, um, make edits, right. Make edits, uh, review facts, review factual info formation and ensure it's correct. So there's still a lot of editing that needs to be done. Add personal touches or slash branding, <clears throat> brand and tone of voice to piece, right? Because there's going to be some of that that needs to be uh, executed here. So that's why you have to read the original article to understand what that might look like. And yeah, so now what I'm going to show you how to do is, so we have this piece, right? I'm going to go ahead and uh, just keep it as it is. I'm going to say original. Actually, we're going to add a, a little bit, add some information here in terms. Can I? So uh, we're going to say original, original URL. We're going to add some of this. And so kind of like our brief, right? We're going to add this in here, original URL. You can structure this however you want, but I just want it. So original URL, uh, target keyword uh, seg slash segment was uh, trunk based base development mint, right? Cause we want to show them, this is what we were looking at, where we were targeting, uh, original URL, uh, purpose, uh, purpose of content, uh, drive, um, acquisition through thought leadership, something you could use, right? Like this purpose of content and convert users to sign up for free trial. Um, so drive organic traffic, right? One and sign up, convert you to sign for a free trial. Those are going to be the two, uh, for a free trial, the two big purposes of the content here for sure. Um, uh, original URL target segments, uh, content type blog slash article, article, just so you have some of these references here, right? Audience audience is going to be, you know, mobile app devs possibly. And then we can do um, another section. So actually, let me uh, insert, can I insert a line? I'm not sure if I can here. Um, additional, so I'll put additional recommendations. Sometimes you can't add all this because you don't have all that information in particular to like assets or brand assets, uh, brand assets. So like uh, workflow slash screenshots related to topic. This could be one way to do it. Uh, brand assets, infographic, graphic slash more visual visualizations where it makes sense, of course. And what, I mean, what we also saw is if we go back to trunk based development in Google things to know, I don't know if this is, is this new? Yeah, it looks like it. That's interesting. Oh, uh, images for sure, because that's, what's ranking. We have related questions. So we talked about some FAQs, things to know, how to, problems, when not to use, users, purpose, right? We talk about a lot of these things here in terms of teams and collaborative efforts and what the purpose is of development. So that's good. Um, we just reword it. We have it in our different, our version of it. So we go back to phrase and just kind of the briefing notes. I would call this and I would say the task was to optimize, optimize existing, existing blog slash article for the target, uh, you could say keyword segment, because it's not just ranking for that keyword segment of trunk based, uh, development, development, target keyword segment. And then we'll say a uh, search volume is around 3.6 K in the U S 
Right. So that's something I would also mention. Uh, current rank, we have to look back at that. So current rank for this was 82, right? As of March 2000, I mean, March 7th. So let's go back. So current rank 87 as of 3-7-2023. These are just good things to note. So like I'll underline search volume, additional recommendations. Um, those are just two of those. Actually, I want to maybe change those to a checklist like that. Uh, related to the topic, uh, target keyword segments, right? For uh, trunk-based development, the original URL, optimize existing blog slash article for the target keyword segment trunk base, adding more contextual value to the topic while providing more information for the user searching this query. Three, uh, connect how Runway app fits into solving the problems mentioned in this article, right? This is a big one. So this one I'm going to highlight because this is definitely we want to focus on in terms of one of the big pieces. So I'll just do this again, draft title. So now we have that set up. We can take the bold off. So I just want to kind of give you a format just of like how, because you, you can't finish it completely, right? There's some things that need to be added from additional brand assets point of view, right? We want to, we want to give the, you know, the founder or the, the hiring manager an idea of what the purpose of the content actually is. So we have to give the tasks that we were set out to do in terms of we're optimizing the blog for the keyword segment, right? Adding more contextual value. Uh, this content should add more, add more value to the topic while providing more, while providing more information or I should say thus, uh, providing more information for the user searching this query. We also want to connect the relationship on how Runway can solve some of the development work workflow issues that come up within this topic. topic. This draws, draws, readers into, I would say this, not draws, but this uh, showcases common problems devs may face. And we need to connect how Runway is the solution to those problems, right? So you need to pretty much Runway is the answer to all their issues that we see, um, that we see coming up around this, this topic, searching this query, all right? The purpose, um, I would say purpose, but, uh, goal drive down camp through acquisition content, leveraging thought leadership, convert users to sign up. So let's say this is one and then this is two. We'll move this up. I'll move this up to audience, all right? So this is just kind of a mini template. It's nothing article, nothing ser too serious. And then I'm just going to export, export as, um, Actually, I'll copy all, copy. We'll bring it into a, a doc.new, right? Because then I can share it here. Uh, we'll paste it all. Great task. And this is a blog optimization. Um, I like to use article. Article optimization for runway draft. And then we have a, just kind of a, you know, we have a, what's it called? We have a draft. We have something we can share, right? And show that we did some due diligence and did some research. All right, we got to come here and fix these last few things. I mean, overall, it's, it's pretty decent. We have the uh, we have the intended task here. Gosh, I'm providing a topic. Da, 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 da. This shows some of the problems of the thing. Um, of course, drive organic traffic, increase, increase the ranking position position of this this article by refreshing the content. I would say this article. Okay. And then here I would just, after I pasted it here, right. Into article draft into, I, into what's a, a Google doc <laughs> can't speak today into a Google doc. I would then file, whoops, let's go back. I would then file download as a, actually, I'm just going to share it. You can share it or download as a PDF. Um, but that's it, right? So that's kind of concluding some of the steps here, make edits, um, six paste into uh, Google doc 
and share, right? We added the personal phone branded voice and making edits is huge. That's something you are definitely going to want to do. Make the edits. Um, you can't just leave it the way it comes out from the, the programs that I use like Zim writer and things like that. They're just assistants, right? They're just helping us get through this. So, you know, within a couple hours, we already have this full draft of a topic. And of course it made some things may need to be stripped out or added in, but we have a good base to start with and we have an understanding. And the more we practice this, the better we'll get at uh, drafting up H2s, the content research, topic research, just to understand more of the structure, getting familiar with the brand and to tone that we're using with our existing company that we're working for, um, or just doing it multiple times, um, kind of rinse and repeat for, for different um, content pieces that you're putting together. In this case, it was an article. Um, we can also do white papers, things like that, and long form like PDF docs and things to add more value for um, startups like this. And uh, yeah, we can create additional workflows there, but I just wanted to show you kind of the, you know, part of the workflow I go through um, and try to document it as well as possible. So yeah, I mean, first we looked at the company product and did our research, right? We reviewed the website, understanding the product features, you know, unique selling proposition, what the pain points are, uh, what does the product do? What does it solve for the audience? Mobile for mobile DevOps teams, right? We can use tools like SEMrush to look at research and look at and research organic keywords and key terms and topics. As many of these tools out there, I use SEMrush, I use Phrase. Um, I like to use Search Console, like I said, directly for first party data, but you gotta use what you can. You know, Keywords Everywhere tool is great too. Uh, there's probably some also free other options. This is what I like, this is what I include in my workflow. In this case, we looked at some other terms that we saw that were this specific URL was already ranking for, but very low in terms of the uh, the page one, right? It was not even on page one, it was like position 80. So it could be page eight, nine or 10. And uh, we saw these other few keywords that we have here, they were actually doing pretty well. And while we could have chose those as an option to in, in better the content, they were very low of search queries. So we weren't gaining that much traffic anyway, even though they were ranking at the top three or four or five positions for those specific keywords. While we, we focused on uh, trunk-based development as one of them, right? So our, our winner was the trunk-based development, development in terms of what we chose to work on today. And then we saw that there was an actual page ranking for that. And we said, hey, we can update this content and make this look a little bit better. Make it make more sense, more comprehensive. Uh, so we did some also some research in Google SERP to understand the search intent of the query. So for trunk-based development, which is what we use, uh, trunk-based development, right? That's what we ended up using. And we wanted to understand the search intent of the query. Is it serving product pages, article blog pages, review aggregator sites? What are the SERP features that we also see for this query? Since it really depends on each individual query, what's actually being served in the search engine results page. In this case, we saw videos, People also ask related questions, uh, needs to know, or uh, images, right? So we know that those are gonna be things we want to add or address within our content as well before we even add our unique spin onto it. Because that's what Google is leveraging as being uh, useful for the intent of the query, right? Uh, choose to cover to, uh, keyword topic and segment, perform research, right? Um, this is kind of backwards. <laughs> we kind of did this earlier on. Um, making a uh, use phrase, look at SERP landscape, right? We should probably make, move this up because that's what we did under 2A, right? That's what we did under 2A. I'll call this 2B and this was 2C, right? Use phrase to look up the SERP landscape, content structure from competitors, give us a baseline of topics we should talk about. Uh, Google search was also part of that. Then we imported insights into ZimWriter. So for, for me, I use ZimWriter. You could probably use uh, J Jasper or some other content AI tools. I like ZimWriter because it installs locally on your computer and you can use its commands with any word processor, anything you insert or type text in. I could even use it in this, this notepad if I wanted to. So that's why I like ZimWriter and there's a, there's a lifetime price you can pay. So one price and you get all the updates forever, or you can test it out and pay the monthly subscription. Very low barrier to entry in terms of cost as well. Uh, I'll leave a link down in the description if you guys want to check it out. So what we did is what we use our structure and our information that we got from phrase, right? Our, our heading ideas and our, our topic ideas. Now we imported that into ZimWriter because of the structure ZimWriter provides. We can list all of our headings. We can create our headings using keywords um, or specific topics that we want to target that are going to be relevant to the topic we're talking about and structure the piece like that. 
of course, then we added, there have some interesting options. We could also do like literary devices, lists, tables, FAQs, uh, tone and tone of voice, how, what kind of audience we want to speak to the keywords we want to include in our content. How often do we want to include it? We don't want to keyword stuff. We want to keep it natural, right? We want to make it make sense and make it contextually relevant. So we imported that into ZimWriter and it took about, took seven minutes, right? To develop a draft approximately for all that 4,000 words, 4k words. Amazing. Pretty great. And it sounded pretty good. We made some edits. This is the big one. Edits, edit, edits. You want to make edits and review the content, review any factual information, ensure it's correct. This is when you can do your research. If you don't have a subject matter expert in the field, go ahead and look up the information, make sure it makes sense. And it actually is factual and true. And if it's not, you got to remove it. You can't include that type of stuff. Um, especially if it doesn't make sense because the person you're sending it to, if it's a CEO, founder of a startup, usually they're looking at it and they're going to say like, this, this is not true. This is not real. You need to make those edits. Um, I rather have more content than less in terms of the draft, because I can always remove stuff. But as you can saw, it makes it easy as we made some edits with our content, our, our concluding heading, and even created some additional information for the Git flow section, we added in kind of a summary article. Uh, or a summary paragraph that combined two articles and we rewrote it on the fly, right? And it made sense. It made good sense. It read well. It was comprehensive. Then we're going to want to add the personal brand and tone of voice to the piece, right? That's something that every company should have kind of parameters on or a document that talks about how they want to um, stress their, their tone of voice and brand in content. And you have to put that spin on it. That's something that you can add as a recommendation because you don't have direct access to the asset. You can only assume what you read from their existing blog. And even then early on, it's still kind of being developed. So it's not really set in stone yet, but make note of it and address it in your content brief. Then I pasted it all into a Google doc, right? And you can share it. So we have it here. We have it drafted here um, to be ready to share and kind of leverage anything here. And you could always use this same template in terms of uh, how you're structuring, you know, the content brief. So hopefully this helps you guys kind of understand the process or workflow for using AI to develop very uh, indicative or very relevant, I should say, a uh, content that sounds good and uses a lot of uh, data or research that you're doing that makes sense and, you know, kind of is ethical. So that's it, guys. That's how you set up kind of a, a content brief slash draft to utilize in your portfolio to send out to hiring managers to give them examples of work you created because not only was this created I you created with AI you actually edited and you know made sure it all makes sense and made the revisions because everyone knows that the editors are really the writers at the end of the day and they're what makes the the final results look the best or sound the best read the best in terms of the content we're putting out there so hopefully this helps if you guys have any questions or would like to see more of these types of workflows just leave a comment down below don't forget to subscribe